Hello and welcome to the Gary Gygax Memorial, scene of our final episode of Purple Rage and the, uh, the sort of summary wrapping up as it were. Uh, let's begin by taking you through what we've um, covered since the last time. So we completed um, the storm horns. The worst one in there, funnily enough, was not uh, what goes up. Breaking the ranks was as brutal as ever. He put up a hell of a fight, our orc, and he only died at the very end against the um, the caster boss. Got him about halfway down and then succumbed to his wounds. Just couldn't... Um, I, I was using blood tribute obviously all the time, but I just couldn't heal back the uh, the damage we were taking. And when when he'd start throwing the black dragon bolt things in, I think the um, what is it, the Dracolich thing that's hovering around that uh, periodically shoots you with things. I think that can do a black dragon bolt as well. So I, I thought we did well to to last you know through i mean those um those groups of giants you know they can knock you down and all sorts of things he got through them but uh just couldn't see it through we did there is a shrine in there we did jib us up and finish it but that to me isn't a, a victory so it was hollow the rest of it though was very good i'm pleased to say he cruised through the um what is it, the the one that ends with the giant fighting the wizard at the end, breaking the ice. And the what goes up, I wish I'd have recorded that, because uh, comparing it to the monk one, and bearing in mind we, we didn't have this, this is a an end weapon here, well, a Barovian falchion level 29, we didn't have that at the time. We were 28 when we did it, so a level lower than the monk was. No sentience, and with uh, the draw axe of the weapon master. So not crap by any means, but uh, not a, a legendary weapon. And we did really well. We very rarely looked like dying. It was um, maximum use being made of the the dire charge and the stunning blow and uh, no i was proud of him i thought he did uh, he did really nicely so that was great um and that's basically all i've done and taken all the all the sagas that we've earned i will put a list of the feats the feat order in the description for this one if any of you are interested but broadly speaking given it's the first one I've really sat down and tried to plan because I really didn't know too much about the the class I think it's uh, it's done pretty well we took um, stunning blow at level one with a view to having some kind of crowd control and that's that stood up right till the end the DC was about 65 or is, should I say, because we haven't quite finished yet, about 65. And that's been more than enough against things that are vulnerable to it. Obviously, plants and undead and all sorts of other things are, are not. So, not ideal, especially as we find ourselves here in uh, Delira's graveyard. So, you can kind of guess that the quest that's coming up is not uh, going to be best suited to us. I, yeah, again, I would have preferred to have recorded the, the what goes up thing because we were really dominant in there for big parts of it. They would throw as much as they could at us and we just took it all and just hammered them down with the dire charge and the, the whirlwind. So that's that's been a really successful combination. Uh, let's take a moment to have a look where the epic destinies ended up. So basically... It was kind of as planned. We knew we'd have to go in Sentinel for the heal and the energy resist was very nice also. And we knew we'd have to be in Draconic for the uh, casting spells while raging. 
and everything else just got thrown into Dreadnought. There were some really worthwhile things in here. Not a lot of um, fillers, shall we say, on the way up to the tier 4. So the, the mantle itself is a little bit lukewarm. The um, terror effect, not ideal, until you pair it up with the thing in tier 4, which is where there. So you can start to stack vulnerability up on opponents. So against uh, bosses, which do take a bit of beating down with the build as I have it set up, that uh, I'm sure has been useful towards the latter stages of the life. Uh, otherwise, the the dire charge, I've made full use of that. It's been lovely to, to close with opponents, you know, to move us around the, the field and also anything we, we hit with that in an AoE gets dropped down and if applicable stunned so very vulnerable for the follow-up which is generally the whirlwind or if I've got time the cracking attack for extra damage and then the whirlwind. Um, tactics DCs very nice for the build sadly only being used for stun I was envisaging using stun and trip I still don't know why the trip met such an ugly fate in Epic, but uh, hey ho, the fortitude stun side of things, even the, the 65 stunning blow worked well all the way into high Epic, and the 75 dire charge, I'm talking about the values in Reaper, fully, um, fully raged and all that. Uh, worked almost without fail when um, the targets were able to be tripped. Little boost to uh, ability scores while the action boosts are going on. More action boosts. Ghost touch, very nice. Imbue dice is applicable to our build, but uh, we didn't really do too much with that. I think we ended up with... Uh, four imbue dice while this death frenzy is going on i had put our alignment as um, chaotic just so we could take advantage of harbinger of chaos as a possible at uh, 28 but i ended up going with um, defic warding the defensive one instead don't regret that um plus one w damage for being in the dread mantle so although the mantle itself is very lukewarm from level 20 you can pick up uh, this extra damage so that's not bad at all and then when you get to 23 you have some tasty ones more double strike uh, suddenly you've got the AOE trip coming in on the back of the dire charge which is lovely and then uh, six critical hit damage with the power attack going which is all the time so that's not bad at all and this was a nice find. This is one Mike mentioned from the Bear Party. I looked at it initially and thought, well, six armor class, neither here nor there. But uh, it's given us, for each one that we... It's, it's also given us six dodge, six uh, maximum dodge. So we went from ten to a cap of sixteen, which for wearing medium armor, I think is pretty good. And bear in mind we're not wearing any, this, this is heroic armor, I bet you we could get uh, higher if we were wearing the proper legendary kit. The only legendary kit I am using for 29, and this is quite unusual for my builds, because generally I leave them with low epic stuff for the last one. We've got a um, Morning Lord's Falchion from the uh, Barovian vendor. And I threw in the Legendary Cloak of Summer from the Feywild because this just seemed like such a nice item for the build. 19 strength, 15 double strike. So I've given up our, um, uh, what do you call it, Salt Marsh bonus. Actually, that being the case, I should have put the uh, the more damaging ring back on because we don't have the bonus anymore, do we? Let's go and do that while I think about it. Oh, 
was some some oversight. While the bank's deciding to interact with us, that's it, whispering ring. A bit more melee power and some, come on, some quality deadly. Quality accuracy, nothing not to like there. So, we'll sit in the bank for the rest of the... Uh, summary so but broadly speaking i'm very pleased to say it went kind of according to plan the haste boost made as a prohibitive favorite against most uh, packs of opponents even with a reaper from very early on so that was lovely the stunning blow worked well and so did the trip in heroic so we had two nice uh, forms of um, multi-target crowd control which was really nice. The damage being dealt to several targets at a time was really good. We did... It did feel a bit uh, mediocre against bosses and we'd be sort of flailing away. But um, this Raging Crush was a nice one to throw in in those those situations and also to remember to while we've got the haste boost going particularly to throw in the cracking attack for extra weapon damage on the the attacks to come so that worked very well i definitely i i reckon maybe this might not be a i suppose most melees are probably not going to be your favorites if you are one who is really averse to clicking the short-term boosts and remembering to to do that it's not really my strong suit but i'm pleased to say i did get into the swing of um i i'm 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 a quite big on putting only the really necessary things on the bar so we've got the haste boost the reaper strike the uncanny dodge We've got the 5th core from Frenzy Berserker, the Death Frenzy, giving us more uh, more strength and more crit multiplayer on a 19 or 20 more imbued dice. The cracking attack should always really be on cooldown. Leading with that is very good to uh, boost the damage of your follow-up attacks like the Whirlwind. Keeping the divine will which we dipped into favored soul for keeping that going to boost the damage and tactic dcs so that was that turned into a i know it's a standard thing for uh for most if not all of the melee players to do but it was a new thing for me as you know we tend to do pure classes here with the ones we're discovering so that worked very nicely keeping the rage going obviously but uh the number of times I let it run out not too bad though and the big bonuses it brought I was very surprised towards the end I think it was eight plus eight on strength towards the back end of it as as you go higher in the barbarian uh, class the rage brings more benefits and eventually you don't get fatigued afterwards I think I have learned plenty. This is before even any feedback from you folks comes in because I'm kind of finishing just as I'm beginning to post the uh, the series. But uh, I'll, I'll say again, I do take on board everything you write and I pass it on to the relevant people if ever I uh, hear of somebody uh, doing a similar build. So um, it's definitely uh, much appreciated any of the the stuff you choose to to share the pointers all that kind of thing but even without that i've i've learned plenty i mean i'm sure you must have all have laughed at me uh wandering along fatigued not realizing that i could use the uh potions of lesser resto to uh, get rid of that so when i when i say i haven't played the the class properly before i meant it and it's been a 
uh, a nice learning curve and um, and a nice uh, proof that even on, on a first time around, I'm sure it's been very far from perfect, but uh, I think we made a half decent job of it. So I'm, I'm more than happy with how it went. Um, sort of power curve wise, as mentioned before, we we started off like an absolute house on fire, didn't we? The the first few levels, I mean, it's very rare, especially for the caster lives, that I just go straight into to Reaper, because it's just not worth it. But this thing, it would have been absolutely uh, curb stomping Elite. So he had to go into Reaper, and he was pretty well stomping that as well. I think we peaked in the mid-heroic, didn't we? We were doing we were doing sorrow dusk weren't we I, I know old content and reasonably straightforward quests but even so we were doing that on uh, reaper 4 i think and looking pretty good doing it too so yeah really really strong out of the gate and then of course it sort of flattened out towards the later heroic but uh i think the the position we're in now we're, we're certainly not, not looking bad at all. And when I say we did what goes up handily, especially compared to the monk, I mean, the monk nearly died several times watching that back. Uh, this run was more assured. I think the blood tribute and the fact it's now giving something like, is it 375, maybe 400 now we've taken an extra level. It's uh, a very handy buffer to have. So, full use made of that. Between that and the renewal, we've been pretty hard to kill. What else have I got? Let's just take a moment to go through the enhancements for anybody who didn't see the the opening of the epic. So my plan was always to go 20 plus in the orc tree, kind of discover this a little bit in a build that would... Uh, synergize well with it because I'd never really done this. I was initially undecided about the Raging Crush but particularly as we don't have the big power boost from Adrenaline to the single shot damage that turned into something pretty good like uh, you know a nasty Reaper or a Crown or something that really needs to be disposed of stun it and then hit it with that. That's obviously one thing I did learn along the way uh, if you saw the earlier episodes, you'll know that I was expecting or hoping that Stunning Blow would work on Reapers. Clearly it doesn't. So that was one of the slight downsides. I still don't regret taking it, though. We got ample mileage out of it, even without uh, working on Reapers. The Reapers, unfortunately, we ended up just having to defend against them with the improved Uncanny and uh, Blood Tribute and uh, hammer them as best we could with like the raging crush and the cracking attack and just haste boost whenever one popped up and thankfully it worked pretty well so yeah no complaints about the the orc tree this powerful line of uh, plus eight to hit and damage in the end extra strength when raging extra power attack boost extra strike through so it, it synergized superbly with everything we were trying to do oh and the extra damage against the helpless as well just to add the icing on the cake plus the raging attack which i ended up uh, raging crush rather i ended up enjoying that haste boost from level one was insanely overpowered no regrets there at all uh, the only slight regret is that um had we not done it this way and gone the sort of more typical route through the Vistani tree, we would also have got deflect missiles, which would have been very, very useful for our survivability. So there is that. But other, o otherwise, haste boost from level one. I never had a character that's had that before, and that was awesome fun. Um, Berserker tree in general, very good. Uh, strike through in abundance for hitting multiple targets once you get this um, fourth tier unlocked and get the the cracking attack uh, up there for that that constant um, 2w damage extra that's a big hitter 
uh, blood tribute early very strong for survivability uh, you'll recall that we didn't have any proper source of heal until going into epic and that thing carried us more than adequately into late heroic only in late heroic did it begin to falter a bit because 150 buffer when things are really smashing you uh, gets a little bit uh, borderline and the, the things at the top here two bonus on crit multiplier and uh, another 1w damage when raging competence bonus to hit points just really really good the cheapest action boost uh, bonuses each one of those just costs one point as opposed to the two points elsewhere that one is two this one is two as well so very nice that and i think that's more yeah more strength while raging so our strength while raging i think i i checked it with the with the summer cloak i think it was up to 83 we will disregard that because that's legendary it was 71 i think from level 20 in epic which i thought was more than respectable lots of um hit points and healing amp in the cores very nice the imbue toggle i don't think it's kind of neither here nor there as far as the build's concerned just a little bit of extra damage but look at this massive amount of extra hit points and healing amp if there's a much better core than that i don't know i think that's great and then this one too very nice the only thing is the the short i mean given the the bonus it's giving six strength one crit damage multiplier on 19 or 23 bonus imbue dice i can understand why it's on a short cooldown but uh, really nice to have and then we've got the ravager tree more power attack more con when raging super nice just chucked a couple in here for extra hit and damage two more hit and damage in there and then we had the occult slayer thanks to mike for advising this for the rages to last longer without that i would have had to monitor it much more closely and uh, i think it would have been a bit painful plus we might have had to invest more points into acquiring extra rages from here which i did initially when the duration was lower and then i knocked them off when uh, once we started getting up towards the four minute mark i thought that was acceptable and then just the uh, four points in the war soul for the divine will battle trance so i thought that that worked out uh, pretty nicely it was nice to be able to I, I mean i hear quite a few of you are here i read quite a few of you on the forum on the youtube comments talking about various builds and saying ah yeah this uh, but it's a thirsty build and you need quite a lot of racial points for this it's nice to be able to throw points into the racial tree and not feel like the build is uh, suffering through not having taken this or that or the other as a result the only thing i really missed aside from umd and all that that brings i guess was the um the deflect missiles as mentioned already i think that's quite a big miss especially when you're soloing and you're attracting all the attention at some points uh, with that it's uh, it's tough but we managed to get through so finishing saves i think they we should rage and then we'll have a better indication of where we're at so far for end of epic not prolific by any means but not terrible either and the reaper one was into the 50s as well with the uh, the bonus we put into the reaper trees just to recap there all in reflex saves i've um, happy with the now with 50 odd uh, reaper points we've been able to split evenly between the defense and attack tree get core four in both which is both very nice and get more of these um, reaper mementos each one of which is contributing to boosting our charges of the reaper strike so that's been lovely too ultimately with a few more points 
we might have been able to um, push on into the top of the of one or other trees. I guess it would have been the offensive tree, but um, yeah, I would have liked the extra tactics, boost, strength, melee power. But uh, for that, we would have need th needed 30. We're just a little bit short. Maybe when we hit the 60 mark, we'll be able to start uh, throwing stuff into the into that that tier and become uh, even more happy with the situation. Is there anything I have missed? I don't think so. I'll, as I was mentioned, I'll list the feats in the description for any who are interested i do mention them in the individual episodes what we've taken on level up but uh, i know it's handy just to see it in a, a little write-up thing so do you know i'm a muppet we've been using this all the life and i forgot to we can teleport back this is the super nice uh, royal guard mask teleporter great for characters without umd that we acquired from the what's it called restless isles quest last life i think the bring me the head of golafan it's called isn't it although the area and the quest themselves are a bit of a chore to get through they can be nice as a, a one and done and that item in particular uh, aside from being very handy to own is certainly worth a shard or two on the astral shard exchange i've seen them well don't take my word for it i think we can we'll probably more than likely see oh no <laughs> well i i think they they tend to get listed around the 50 shards mark here on orion so if you do happen to find one and you don't have uh, a use for it, you could make yourself a few shards if uh, if that was your thing. Now, why have I gone to Ravenloft when we're supposed to be going to the uh, Delira's graveyard? Multitasking fail again. So, as a self-confessed, very inexperienced melee player, I think this class has uh, looked after me quite nicely. I haven't, aside from a couple of levels in late heroic where I was struggling a bit without healing, I didn't quite know if to to stick with a hireling and just hope it didn't die because it wasn't enough to have one, on, you know, waiting at the start. I needed something with me if it was going to give me heals. I didn't know whether to do that to. Uh, to just keep going with the blood tributes or to do the thing in the middle to mess about having the one the hireling at the start and call it to me when I wanted to top up in the end I just stuck with the blood tribute and it was just about okay there were some spiky damages like black dragon bolt or whatever it happened to be uh, ticking damage over time from a red crown that did get the better of me but not too often that's on such a short cooldown, the Blood Tribute, that uh, I found it to be more effective than I would have supposed. So that was uh, that was a pleasant surprise, as was the, the class and the build in general. I'm pretty sure I, I, I wasn't expecting to, to the crowd control side to be as strong as it was. And that led into us being able to uh, to be quite a bit more survivable because they can't hit you when they're scattered all over the floor. So that was nice. Now we're going to be ambitious here. I recall our alchemist got smashed on four, didn't he? And went in on two subsequently. And by no means was he uh, doing it comfortably. So I'm going to see how we go on on the same setting on this barbarian yes we've got a legendary weapon which he didn't have and a legendary cloak but uh, he was able to crowd control a lot of these things whereas we can't stun any of them so all we can do is trip the 
the groups we won't get any bonus damage or anything for that so I think the playing field there is fairly level so if we can get through this or at least make a good attempt I'll be more than happy who am I trying to kid if we don't uh, get through it I'll be miserable like usual it's uh, all or nothing isn't it on this channel So let's give it our best shot. You hear the now familiar sound of bone clapping against stone. Let's not be shy with the boosts or the blood tribute. So I am gonna use the knockdown. No bonus damage as mentioned, but still the things that are on the floor can't cause us too many problems, so there is that. You notice a rusty leather behind the grate to the side of the hallway. 72, why is it only 72? There's something missing there. What's missing? Something wrong, is it something wrong with the gear? Yes, the belt, okay. Where is it now? 70, what's going on here? What have I done wrong? Uh, is it that? No. Is it displaying wrong? I think all the gears as it should be. Fifty nine. There's something. There's something really wrong there. It's not to do with that that I've taken off, is it? No. What on earth has happened here? The gear's all correct. Are we are we not raging? Yeah, we're raging. Well, all the way up we've had seven is that No, that's right. All the way up we've had um 75 and 65 and now for some reason it's uh, it's all over the place and I don't understand why no idea I think everything is as it as it was apart from this cloak I can't believe that's made a such a difference. Nope, it's even worse. Oh well. But 60, 60 is going to be a bit borderline. Well, we can't use it anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So it's the 70, and 70 should still be uh, good enough, I think, for most things. I don't know where the, the extra five's gone. Just get stuck into them. I think we took a black dragon bolt to the face there, so I have to be aware of that and stanch it with the uh, blood tribute as soon as that happens. group pop up here aren't we go on get them that'll do so with most of the opponents in here have got decent DR against us against our attacks and also none of them can be stunned I really haven't done us any favors with the quest choice here have I
sometimes it can be a little bit clunky with the uh, activation as there the dire charge but I'm not complaining generally speaking it's been awesome for us let's try and get out of here before these skeletons come active always the path of least resistance with me Get him, get him, get him, get him. Nice. The one thing we are seeing with the change to the falchion over the axe is more crit. Falchion, of course, has a wider crit profile even than the weapon master axe. We're taking a pounding there, aren't we? I was blood tributing away. Let's just take a moment to uh, gather ourselves here. Hopefully out of combat we can heal properly. The heals in combat are so uh, nerfed, it's almost not worth uh, breaking the momentum to do them. Just try and last through it with the blood tributes then do as I just did there and heal up afterwards. If I had the invis ring on still I would have used it here to just go flying through this section. down yes the sunder part of that dire attack is gonna help us as well because all of these will have ridiculous fortifications so to have that taken down some is not gonna be doing us any harm at all don't die Wow, we got smashed there, didn't we? So many times I pressed the uh, blood tribute. I think we've got some more coming up here, haven't we? Oh, maybe not. Fences up, big attacks in. Okay, while well that boost is going, shall we try to set this going? Come on then, if you're coming. That's just really nice, even though we can't stun them, we can knock them down and take the sting out of any... Uh, Oh, Black Dragon Bolt, as soon as I see that hit the stanch, the blood tribute. Go on, get him. We've got one or two things going to pop up up here, haven't we? Oh, you hit hard, my word! Do you hit hard? Hey, you're supposed to be on the floor, you two! Did he pass his... he must have made his save. Yeah, I've no idea why we're suddenly down to 70 on that 
but it definitely was 65 and 75 I think I even showed it in a previous uh, episode grateful for the extra damage the legendary weapon is doing because that's allowing us to not to have to uh, take too much from all this stuff that we can't stun. Come on, quicker. You can see I'm up to almost 20 blood tributes now. And it's still not hurting us too much. I had to get rid of the uh, the big thing down there. That would have really hurt us. That's what I've tried to do all along most of the run to use the the crowd control to neutralise the nastier targets. not get surrounded here right? come on I think that was as much lag as anything else at least I hope it was otherwise we were missing an alarming quota I think this is more or less the final room, isn't it? Just tempt them in here. All the boosts on. Get rid of those damn arcane things first. Keep doing the temporary hit points. Now how do we stack up against this thing? Pretty well I think. Yeah, oh we've got some nice uh, purple numbers coming here. Go on. Keep the temporary things up. I think we've saved best till last. The one most vulnerable to our attacks was the boss at the very end. So happy days there. And I think all we have to do now is just nab the book, ignore the opponent, and we are done. Well... I'm pretty satisfied with that. I don't think we came close to dying too often, if at all. So we could almost say we're in a similar place to, uh, in terms of what difficulty we can manage with the build, to what the the alchemist could do at this stage, which is more than satisfying, given that there's generally quite a disparity between my melee uh, classes and um, and the caster classes so yeah more than happy at that it's been uh, it's been a, a fun ride sure I've, I've had some uh, some bits where I've had to learn along the way the looking back at it the uh, not knowing that the stunning blow didn't work on reapers well fair enough if you don't know you don't know and the 
the the fatigue thing the fatigue thing was a, a little bit painful to be honest even being able to dispel it with the lesser resto i was really looking forward to an, a lot happier once we didn't have to mess about with that uh once we got to what i think that was at 20 wasn't it because i'd taken the two non-barbarian levels so i think if i could if i could uh let's just get the loot and get out of here so you don't have to listen to these these archers plugging away epic serpent branch yeah <clears throat> Is that actually a viable option for a bow? Well, who, who levels as a bow user these days anyway? Right, so what was I saying? Um, yeah, the two, the two biggest issues, the lack of a heroic heal, to a big extent the blood tribute makes up for that and sort of glosses over it, but not completely. So once you're out of the realms of the Cure Serious Potion being particularly useful, the, there is a problem there if you're soloing. And um, the other thing was this fatigue mechanic. So both of those went away going into Epic. I suppose another downside are the limitations placed on the Epic choices by certain things I needed. So I needed a heal, I had to go in the Sentinel for that. So that was one tree spoken for. I needed um, this cast while raging. As far as I know, there was no other way to, to get that, given how we'd, we'd put the build together. I think the bear druid gets an option for that in their tree. Not sure where it is, how low hanging it is. So maybe, a, maybe that's one of the reasons why... Um, the barbarian or whatever they call it is a popular combination but yeah that tied up two two epic destinies so we only really had the one to go at that said this one made up totally for the the disappointment of trip going into epic and had loads of good stuff in and pro provided the backbone for our epic uh, progress so no complaints at all on that score i uh i'm more than happy at because uh, i was kind of discovering the upper part of this for the first time too and uh yeah it proved to be very decent don't regret either going into to either of these i think without a workable heal as a solo we'd have been absolutely goosed and without that well, I, I just don't think it would have been workable at all, would it? No no casting of the renewal while well raged. We'd have had to un unrage whenever we wanted the... Oh no, it would have been a nightmare. So we, we didn't really have a choice. So that's the, the slight downside. There were some restrictions. But on the upside, monster AoE out of the gate. Heavy hitting damage anyway. Um, very effective crowd control with the stunning blow just a slight downside it's not working on reapers but um, at speed as well let's mention the run speed 10% extra run speed with the barb which is very nice and I think um, some builds when they just have a level spare and wondering what to throw it into will just take barbarian just for that so uh, yeah, that was that was very nice. Uh, what else on the on the plus side? Well, the the way we had it set out, I've never been able to get as high as we have here. I mean, it's saying seventy eight there, but it's I think it was seventy seventy one in low epic with the gear we had. So that's a fairer comparison against the alchemist. Now the alchemist was closer 61 than 71 on intelligence. So the, the strength, I think it's a bit of an eye-opener for me. All right, it's a lot relying on short-term boosts, but 
I've never played a build where it was where there was so much uh, potential for boosting the the main stat up, and so your hit and damage as well as uh, helping the tactics side of things. So that was that was good fun, and the the fact the tactics stayed um, viable right until the end, helped by the fact that this is on a higher base i think that goes from a 20 doesn't it yeah 20 plus highest ability score plus bonus to stun attacks and i've just discovered reading that why we had a drop in uh, stun even though i improved the strength we had on the drow axe uh, 10 stunning so shame on me for not seeing that sooner but uh, that that's why so I think if we had, well, why don't we, do I still have it equipped? Yeah, if we still have that equipped and along with the, the cloak, I bet you we see something uh, pretty crazy now. No, why not? Oh, I give up. It was, you'll have to take my word for it. It was 65 and 75 in Reaper anyway. Okay, I think um, that about wraps it up for this one. Uh, broadly speaking, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, as mentioned. A lot better than I'd uh, hoped for. I mean, I would, I would definitely have put myself in the category prior to starting this series well I, I was in the category of knowing very little about melee and what made them work and that kind of thing and pretty uncomfortable playing one but um, although I struggled a bit with the the tempest but the monk was a great deal of fun and this one I suppose is the first one where we haven't had to rely on another tree the monk was relying on the falconry tree to make things work and this character has done it more natively with the stunning blow so that was quite nice and I think broadly speaking he was reasonably hard to kill as well because that um, that blood tribute is quite hard to get through and of course he gets uh, barbarian damage reduction the higher up you go so we've got an 8% uh, damage reduction on everything coming in which isn't terrible either right I won't waffle on forever the too long didn't listen is I've had a good time with the build. I'd encourage you to have a go with the Barbarian if you've never tried, particularly if you play in a group, because it is fair to say that there are certain elements, particularly in late heroic, that might cause you a few issues if you don't have somebody along uh, healing you. But there's nothing to stop you trying more successfully than I did to, uh, to have a hireling along. My my issue was that uh, the hireling just kept dying and I couldn't raise it because I had no UMD and uh, leaving it at the door just felt like, well, what's the point? I suppose if you were very resistant to damage or you didn't mind just calling it to you, you know, halfway through the quest when you wanted a, a decent heal, that could that could work too. I guess that's a, a thing. I remember doing that uh, in my times as a warlock when I wasn't relying on uh, heal scrolls to bump me up. So I, suppo I suppose that could be a thing. Right, I'm not going to waffle on for, for any longer. It's been a, a good life. I'll uh, thank you in advance for all the constructive feedback. And <laughs> I hope that by the time we get to this episode, I'll have learned significantly more about the class than I know now. Thank you very much, as always, for looking, and I will speak to you next time. The next one is slated to be the Sorcerer. Now, it's been a long time since I played as that, either. I'm looking forward to it. The fast casting, the mass hold is nice. I haven't done any mass holding since I did my racial lives on my main character as a warlock. 
so I'm looking forward to that because I know how effective it is I have a feeling I'm going to try and play as a um, war forged because being a solo uh, we're going to run into the same problem we had here aren't we not amazing UMD and no real healing options until we get to epic so I think we're going to sacrifice a DC or two go as a war forged and get the amazing um, re what's it called reconstruct line of spells and solve the problem that way okay well that that's in the future and if uh, if any of you has any tips for sorcerer I think from memory i think when i did it i went all fire but from memory from reading around people are tending to sort of start off with fire and then maybe midway through the heroic they're swapping to electric and then towards the very end of the heroic they're going back to fire something like that so i'll have to i'll have to see what we can come up with okay far too long already thanks very much as always and I will see you the next time around the wheel. Take care.